Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. As you can see, we are not in front of our doorway or in the bonsai room. No, we are at our campsite up in the mountains. Well, mountain. Singular. Since the world tour is in the next episode, I've been hard at work putting some finishing touches in and around our home on Lupine Ridge. In the meantime, I thought it would be fun to whet everyone's appetites by sitting here by the campfire, finally, and telling stories while we share some mugs of hot chocolate to ward away the winter's chill here on the hilltop. While I'm reading the lore we've gathered from our exploration and from panning through bony soil, I'll show you clips in the background of some of the touch-ups I've been working on to make the estate presentable for the next episode. Some of these things are things that I've been meaning to do for a while. So, I invite you to sit back, relax, and join me in this journey of piecing together the stories of the people in ages past who inhabited this, our wonderful, mysterious, and dangerous world. First, we have here some notes from a fellow named Dimitri. Dimitri's Notes, Part 1 of 5. These are the findings of Dimitri Arvo regarding the natural philosophies of Cato Hill University. I cannot seem to make sense of it myself. It irks me terribly. Lord Chamberlain Fulce will be here within the month. No doubt he will carry with him the end of my erudition if I fail to provide him his answers. My only consolation here is that the other scholars have failed more bitterly than I. One of them, the older Gautish fellow, caught fire to his laboratory, trying to incinerate the black filth. As for me, I have been loath to even approach it. This excrement, whatever it may be, I catch myself on the edge of prudence whenever I investigate it. It seems to spread, regardless of condition. No procedure I have tried can halt it. I vacillate between fury and flight. How should I kill it? What can I do to stop this? And all the same, what can I do? Can it be stopped? What dreadful scourge is this? But enough of this. The dark substance haunts my thoughts, but I will not suffer its rule. The Lord Chamberlain will be here soon, and I intend to have results. Second page. That Falx boy came to visit today. Troublesome. If it were my decision, I would have sent him on his way without even a glance into our library. But the rector would have none of it. It seems fear of the boy's father has spread throughout the academy. Unbelievable. To think that an upstart sellsword who butchered his way into the nobility could startle and cow his betters into submission. Perhaps I should not be surprised. It is foolishness, however. The house of Ingmar Fox should never be welcomed into our institutions. We of the finer bloodlines should not give way to the masses. They may win the Emperor's favor with conquered cities and burning fields, but we will always have his ear with our superior acumen and grace. It is a birthright we risk depriving ourselves of, should the lowborn be given proper education. Page 3. These are the findings of Dimitri Arvo regarding the natural habitat of Cato Hill University and its surrounding territories. Despite my best efforts, I have been recruited for a sojourn into the fields and farmsteads of the neighboring countrymen. For the last week, various planters and merchants have been flocking to the university in droves, bleating for our wisdom and assistance. Apparently there is some new blight threatening to ruin the year's harvest, and they cannot solve this affair on their own. Well, such is the responsibility of the learned class. This expedition has taken myself and two colleagues a short carriage ride south to the village of Grolt. A miserable, muddy village, to be sure. We've taken residence in the mayor's house, where I now write this entry. The mayor has sworn to take us to the infected fields as soon as daybreak tomorrow. I look forward to finishing this task decisively and returning to my studies. Perhaps a hot bath and a bit of de-lousing will be in order as well. Page 4 or 5. These are the findings of Dimitri Arvo regarding the proceedings of the Diet of Kings. He's a genius. There. I admit it. I have hid from it for too long. He is the only one who can save us at this point. Maybe he's always been the only hope. The convention has come to an agreement. In light of the endless reports of devastation and the collapse of two neighboring kingdoms, we have decided that Lord Falx's grand machine is our only viable option. We are to begin sending materials immediately. And lastly, the fifth and final page in Dimitri's notes. Put the beakers away. Pull the tools from the walls. Look not to the plans of great ambition and great purpose. Take only your pen in hand and write your last words. 
give praise and thanks where it is deserved. Say farewell to those still here. Now go and stand in the city. Stand in the hills and valleys. Stand and witness the end coming for us all. It was not always so grim, was it? No. Not always. I remember brighter times. I remember running through the forest. I remember a foolish girl eyeing me from across the table. I remember the spiteful glare of a noble woman. A scourge came upon us. A scourge indeed. Well, Dimitri seemed like he had a pretty high horse and got knocked down by the realities of our grim past. I hope these don't catch up to us. Next we have Reflection. These letters are unsigned, but it seems to be someone who is familiar with Jonas Falx. Page 1 of Reflection. I am not the reflective type. I was taught from a young age that life is better treated as a task. There is work to be done, so do it and do not complain. Thinking seemed like a luxury. I still follow that creed, but I have, in my time, come to see the power of thought. Thought has lifted me out of despairing poverty. Thought has given my village the strength to survive the harsher seasons. Thought has seen my people raise their voices in hope for the first time in years. I am, speaking of course, of him, my friend and companion, Jonas Falx. Our task here will be done in some few days. I wish to make record of the events that have transpired until this point. I do not know if any will live to read this, but I cannot leave it be. A madness compels me to write, though I am no learned master. This task would be better set for Jonas, but he is in no condition to complete it. I digress. Allow me to start from the beginning, and forgive me my shortcomings. Our second page of Reflection. I stole into the Falk's estate once, as a young man. I had intended to bring home a few pounds of our wheat and perhaps a handful of coins. I dared not take too much. The old Lord Falx mostly ignored our village in the shadow of his fiefdom, but he was a harsh, stringent man who would not suffer the insult of robbery. Nevertheless, I intended to rob him. It was here in the shade of night that I came upon him, the Lord's son, Jonas, stumbling the dark toward the library. In truth, I presumed myself dead when he discovered me. No harm came to me, however. The boy was also seeking to avoid his father's cruelty, and in me he saw an ally. I knew the forests and paths around this land, as well as the quiet places. In time, I would show them to him. My trespassing onto the estate became a common occurrence. I would teach him about the land and the Yemen's life, and in return he would offer me lessons in writing, art, and the natural philosophies. This arrangement continued in secrecy until the day the old Falx died, and I was able to walk through the front door as an honored guest. In the same manner, Jonas was welcomed and honored when he came to my village. We were fast friends, brothers. We were prepared for the coming storm. That last one seemed to have bled onto a second page, so we are now on reflection page four of six. Together, we rode for the university. Jonas, up to this point, had been the subject of much talk throughout high society. Those who had met him regarded him as something of a prodigy, a scientific genius. Coupled with his newly inherited lordship, he was expected to do great things. He enrolled at Cata Hill to fulfill that potential. Seeking to make my own impact on this country, I accompanied him as a valet. Jonas made great progress here. In a scant few years, he was held in high prestige amongst the peerage and consultant for many natural and philosophical concerns. He found in himself a great propensity for invention, producing many valuable tools to ease the toils of the common folk. For this, I was very grateful. For my own part, I had failed in irritable fashion to ignite any kind of social upheaval. The nobles of the university would pay me no mind, short of glares and outright threats. The workmen, drivers, and cooks treated my words as a fearful poison. Only Jonas would ever listen to my hopes for a peaceful, equitable world, free of the chains of serfdom. At times, I suspected he simply humored me. But now I know better. Page 5 of Reflection It was at this point, some years later, that a change occurred. Although he never deigned to speak of it, I believe Jonas had some kind of breakthrough. His inventions grew equally more wondrous and monstrous. 
the golem, the locusts, the things without which our endeavor would fail. These he created and shared freely with the world. The people, both common and titled, begin to see him as a shining light here to guide them to a new era. In truth, perhaps that would have come to pass were it not for the great adversity we were soon confronted with. Soon, the country would begin to understand its own fragility. Each day there were new reports, refugees wandering from town to town. It felt as though we had all been sentenced to death. That helplessness returns to me still when I close my eyes. When the Emperor sent out the call for assembly, Jonas was among those compelled to find a solution. I was there when he was told the news. I remember finding it strange when for a moment his face ran pale and he seemed to shake with fright. But there was nothing strange about that, I see now. He locked himself in his laboratory and bade me not to disturb him. For months he continued this way, leaving only to eat and drink. His youthful looks quickly deteriorated, and it seemed as though a great weight bore down on him. He emerged in time for the Diet, with a heavy, unwieldy pile of schematics. And then we have Reflection, page 6 of 6. The rest I have lost the will to speak of. I only wish to say that my friend, my brother, has done the best he could, and that I am not without hope. Our time down in these dark caverns has not drained me of life, it has convinced me of it. I have seen my dream of a better world come true in these depths. I have seen noble and commoner work, sing, weep, and die side by side. I have seen horrors, but I have seen humanity face them with hard eyes and clenched fists. I have struggled alongside the fiercest stars of our ruined land. Scholars, engineers, soldiers, hunters, merchants, even beggars. All who found the strength to resist our doom. My countrymen. Our greatest endeavor will come to life in a matter of minutes. I go now to meet my comrades and see the result of this, our last, finest gambit. May our work be not in vain. Next, we found one more letter. Now, we've read three of these in episode 35, so if you missed those, you can go back and watch that one again. It's toward the end of the video. But since then, we found one more. And here it is. We thought we knew what hunger was, yet nobody was prepared to face this merciless starvation. I could not dare wish this upon my greatest enemy. The feeling of emptiness is crushing me. I cannot tear it from my mind. With each passing day, our strength wanes and our demise reaches closer. Adelaide, my sunlight, I beg you, forgive me. I have failed you. Well, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode. I hope you enjoyed the campfire stories, and I hope you're looking forward to the world tour in the next episode. I have been working hard at that, and I hope you'll enjoy walking through all of our builds and seeing them from a new light. If you'd like to submit any AMA-style questions for me to answer in a future video, you can leave them in the comments with the hashtag 20Questions. And if you play computer games and would like to support the channel, consider using my partner link next time you're shopping on the Humble Store, on screen now and in the description below. As always, my name has been Kurzar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.